I know some of the people maybe who are not from Africa, you could not understand what I'm saying, but people have got so many bad cravings, bad cravings, bad addictions. Hello friends, welcome to another episode of my life experiences. My name is Wesi Nyanewa Sosola, your usual host. It's been a while since I had a podcast like this one. I think it was uh, before the um, Cyclone Freddy and after Cyclone Freddy, I took a two weeks break uh, just because my country Mal Malawi was in mourning. Then from there, I posted some travel vlogs. So it's been really a minute um, since uh, we had a talk like this one. So guys, let us chat. Last week, I was unwell. I was sick. I, I was on antibiotic for one week, but later on, I'm thanking God that I'm back to normal. I'm back on my feet. I'm up and running. God has healed me. Thank you, God, um, for your healing. I'm just thankful to God for that. But otherwise, I was really struggling last week. And uh, the kind of sickness that I had last week, it just took me back in my memory lane. Because I'm not the kind of person who is usually sick. So the sickness from last week, it really surprised me. The feeling that I was having, it surprised me. And it took me back memory lane to the time after my secondary school days. When I had just graduated from secondary school, started college, it was a very hard time for me. It was time when I was so sickly. It was time when I was looking sick. It was a time when I was feeling sick. It was a very hard time for me. This was a time when I went to so many doctors. I went to so many um, hospitals, clinics, specialist doctors. I remember one person told me that go and meet a TB specialist. I was tested of so many diseases, so many sicknesses, but I couldn't get to the bottom of the sickness. What is it that causing my sickness? What is it that is causing my unhealth? Of course, looking at me, I'm already, as I am, a slim-bodied person. But back then, I was very slim, not just slim. I mean, people can be slim, but being healthy. But for me, I was unhealthy, slim, unhealthy, slim, slim because of a sickness which I could not identify the cause. And the clinics, the doctors, the specialists could not tell me what is the cause of my sickness. And it was really troublesome for me in my heart to see that I'm a young girl, I come from, I'm in college, but I'm very sick. I'm looking sickly. And maybe people who knew me from back then can really testify that was that time we were sick. Maybe because of diplomacy, they were not saying it, but I wasn't well. So this time around, when I was sick, it took me back memory lane to that time. Now, the background of the whole thing is that growing up, I was a young girl. I used to live with my, um, I, I, um, I was used to live with my guardians back then, and my guardian was pregnant. And most of the women in Africa, especially in the 90s, I don't think even now, but most of the African countries, a lot of women were addicted to eating soil. They could eat soil. I mean, when I'm talking about soil, maybe you don't understand. It's little soil from the ground. There are people who dig the soil, they smoke it, and when they smoke the soil, they, the soil, they sell it out to people. And it used to sell like hot cakes. A lot of women, especially pregnant women, out of like a, a pregnancy craving, they could eat that soil. So, my guardian, as pregnant woman, she was having those cravings. So she would send me to the market. Why is he go to the market and buy soil for me? So I would go there, buy the smoked soil for her. She would eat. And as she's, she's eating, I would also partake of the same. I would eat the soil. Not knowing that as I'm doing that, I'm developing my own craving. I'm developing an addiction. I'm developing a craving. So I was always eating this soil together with her. And I developed a very, very, very nasty, bad craving for soil, for clay, real clay digging down, dirt. That's what I was eating. And I'm thankful to God for setting me free from that because it's a nasty habit. It's a nasty habit. So that's how all, all of it started. And when I became sick, I was going to the hospitals, to the clinics. People could not diagnose what my problem was. Other people were saying, you've got a small heart. And I was like, I'm already slim. How big do you want my heart to be? 
other people are saying it's because you've got low blood levels i said yes my blood level is coming from this sickness my, tell me what is causing me to be sick and nobody could tell me what was causing me to be sick until there came this time i was really tired of getting sick i went to this clinic a very simple clinic not a specialist anymore not a doctor anymore i think it was just a clinical officer or maybe a medical officer I went there, I described my symptoms. And that guy, the way he behaved, I thought as if he did not give it more, pay more attention to me because, you know, as I've said that I was visiting specialist doctors, but when I presented my symptoms to this person, it didn't take time. In no time I had written for me a prescription, go take these drugs. And I was like, this person is not taking me seriously. Why? I was like, why isn't he taking me seriously? I thought I've explained that I've met, I've met so many specialist doctors. Yet he took barely two minutes. He had written diagnosis and I was off to get my medication. And disappointingly to me, when I went to the pharmacy, they only gave, gave me two tablets, two small tablets for that thing. I said, what? What is this? But going home, I took one tablet today. Then I repeated the dosage. I think he, it was the following day or maybe after one week, I repeated the tablet. When I did that, that was the end of my problems. That was the end of my sickness. Hello, good health. That's how it was. It only took two tablets. And ask me what the tablets were. Albendazole. Albendazole is a drug for parasites, stomach parasites. I think in um tape worms i think maybe ring worms but the worms that are found in the alimentary canal in the intestines uh those worms the parasites that's our benders so it's the drug in il vernacular we call them mimba. so i had suffered for years not knowing that i had developed mimba. What a shame thing, shameful thing that was causing me all my troubles. But now what I want to say is that it's because of the addiction that I had. But since then, even though my sickness had gone, but the addiction was still there. Every time I could see soil, maybe on the trees from termites, uh, cheese sway shija, cheese sway on trees, I would want to take that soil and eat. Every time I would see soil, I would want it. It was a very nasty. Just imagine looking at dead and craving to eat it. I know some of the people maybe who are not from Africa, you could not understand what I'm saying. But people have got so many bad cravings, bad cravings, bad addictions. Other people are addicted to soil like I was. Whenever the, the rainfall drops to the ground and I'm perceiving that smell coming from the rainfall the soil, I would always crave the soil as if I should go outside, get soil and put it in my mouth. But I just made that resolve that, you know what, I've been sick. This soil is not good to my body. It will give me these parasites. It will give me these worms. This soil is not good to my body. It may cause me to have an appendix problem. This soil is not good to my body. It may cause so many diseases to me. Why am I having this addiction? And I just pray to God. I don't know how, but later on, this addiction vanished. This addiction went. I can't explain how, but it went. It vanished. And I thank God because of that. I know maybe there are also people who are listening to me. You are struggling with some addictions of your own. It could be soil. It could be other people eat charcoal. It could be other people they eat chalk. Other people, they eat a lot of bad, bad, nasty addictions that people have. Other people, if you are a man or other women, they do smoke. Or maybe you are having addictions from um, alcohol or so many other things. Not only maybe addictions from substances like this, or also sometimes behaviors, bad behaviors, like bullying people. You are addicted to maybe gossiping. So many behaviors which are bad for you to do. I just want to assure you today that God can set you free from that addiction, no matter what it is, how nasty it is. You know, sub the devil, he captures us sometimes with these addictions. Our bodies 
belong to God. This is a temple of God. This body that we have is a temple of God. God has obligated us to take care of this body. He doesn't want us to subject it to these addictions. It's only him who can set us free. If it's something that you've tried on your own, that I want to stop eating soil, where is he? I've tried, but I can't stop. Just present it to God. He set me free. He can also set you free. Maybe it's a smoking. You may say, oh, sorrow is easier, but the smoking is hard. No, God can set you free no matter what addiction you may be struggling with right now, whether it's drinking beer or whatever addiction you are having or whether it's bullying people or whether it's gossip or whatever addiction you have, God can set you free. And when the sun sets you free, you will be free indeed. Just present your trouble, just present your addictions, just present those cravings to God. And I want to assure you, child of God, that God is able to set you free. You are meant to be well, not to get sick because of um, addictions and cravings. So it's my prayer right now that you present it to God and God shall set you free. Addiction is enslavement. Addiction is enslavement. It's not joy, it's enslavement. Finally, I would like to read from the book of First Corinthians 6, verse 19 to 20. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own? For you were bought at a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Glorify God in your body and your spirit, which are God's. Take care of your body and your spirit. Make that resolve to be set free from that addiction, to be that set free from those cravings in the name of Jesus. If you can do it on your own, present them to God. If you can't do it on your own, seek help from somewhere. I know that there are other people who give help to uh, people with addictions. Just seek help so that you should be set free from these addictions. God is able to set you free from any kind of addiction or craving that you may have. I just want to assure you, what it needs right now is first step from you. Take that first step. Make a resolve in your heart. And when God sets you free, you shall be free indeed. Thank you so much, friends. Stay blessed.